Wild crop relatives are the plants that give us the cultivated strawberries, the cultivated cranberries, the corn, the raspberries, all the stuff that you buy. In my 20 states, we harbor about two-thirds of, of North America's wild crop relatives. In the commercialization of food at the level that we're looking at now and the clear need to feed people, we're, we're going the cultivar route in, in that. And, you know, we import bees and flies to pollinate tomatoes in greenhouses because we can't get honeybees or bumblebees anymore. That's done. But what we want to keep is that genetic stock of the wild stuff that's the precursor to that. But in terms of us finding real, the, you know, the blueberry from the wild, you know, you got to drive to the side of the road somewhere and pick it or that's over. You know, even the stuff at the co-op, this is stuff that's been genetically altered for shippability, sustainability, color. That's, but, but remember, we've done this by degrees forever. We've done this for 2,000 years with corn. We've done it for at least 2,000 years with, with rice. It's part of what we do. I was just reading in the just reading in the last couple of days um, the Seattle, um, I believe it's native Seattle native food forest that they've created the first food forest and I believe it is native to that area. So, but they're working on you know. So it is something that we can be doing. We have a lot of people that want to get their food locally and they want to harvest their food. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, if you've seen these the little leeks ramps, the little wild onions. They are the ones that come up pretty soon in the wet mm -hmm. spots. Mm -hmm. they, people dig them up out of, for instance, national forests. And if they bring a few of them home and cook them into a pot, that's fine. But if you Google ramp fests in West Virginia now, these wild plants are being decimated in natural environments. Absolutely decimated. Um, so, you know, you, we have to weigh this. We can't all go and forage anymore. <laughs> we will starve. <laughs> and there, we don't have enough of this product left in wild land, so we need to, we need to really uh, hold that close to the vest and, and protect them. Um, so, you know, there's no, we can't go back and, and just forage for food, that, that's over. We can do that in a small way, but when we begin to commercially harvest native plants on a commercial scale, and for instance, state or national forest, it's a mess, because we're really depleting these, these resources. One of the reasons why I'm intent on the notion of keeping native plants around is that, you know, when environments are at risk, you, you want to keep the parts so that when climate change, as climate change continues and our natural communities start moving west or north or wherever they're going to move, we've got the parts so that the parts can move. The parts all <coughs> won't move all at the same time, but we want to keep the parts. I feel like the hen, you know, with the wings over the chicks, you know, <laughs> like this. We want to keep the parts. And one example of that has to do, this will be my last point, crop wild relatives. We talk about keeping the parts. We say that wild plants are useful, but here are some real e examples. I started on this project about a year ago, and I've learned a lot, I've invested a lot of time in it. In my 20 states, we harbor about two-thirds of, the United, of North America's wild crop relatives. What is that? Wild crop relatives are the plants that give us the cultivated strawberries, the cultivated cranberries, the corn, the raspberries, all the stuff that you buy, even at the co-op nursery. Those are cultivated materials that have been, been crossed back and forth so that they're redder, or they're greener, or they fruit earlier or, and this is 
increasingly more, more uh, important, they can resist drought, stuff like that. Or they're disease resistant. And where is all that genetic material? It's not in the crops. It's back in the woods. It's back in the woods. It's back in the wild raspberries, the wild strawberries, the wild blueberries, the wild, the wild corn. The precursor to corn was teosinte. This little bitty thing that was in, is now still in Central America, that's the precursor to corn. This, can you imagine how important that is? So we've been collecting this seed in, on the National Forest and putting it in long-term seed storage. We have a facility in Fort Collins, Colorado to do that so that we, we're keeping the parts. And some of these scary, scary important agricultural crops, maybe you've heard of the in uh, Spitsbergen, Norway, an island off of Norway. It was an old abandoned copper mine called <laughs> Doomsday Vault <laughs> off, of a, off of an island in Norway. I've got a picture of it for our Zaki Wings and Seeds project.